morning, Winterberry family. It's great to see all of you this morning on this, what they call the unofficial start of summer. Is that what they call it? Um, it means that you can safely plant your garden and not get it frozen, maybe. Maybe. I've frozen more than one tomato plant in June uh, up in the great white north of Orangeville. So I'm really careful about planting anything until September. And then, then it's too late and I don't have to plant anything. But uh, anyway, no, the garden's all turned over. The robins are eating whatever's come up, and so that's, that's good. Um, this morning, uh, as we, we are kind of moving, you know, it feels like we're moving towards summer. Let's roll some announcements up here and see what we've got. Um, our first uh, one upcoming is probably going to be about partners and mission. We're going to be bringing that... Um, that to a conclusion probably by about Father's Day. First week of, we're going to talk to the people and, and see what, what they say. Um, remember that your partners in mission uh, offering and donations are going to the Caribbean territory this year. And as we, uh, as we do that, uh, you're going to be, um, well, benefactors, I suppose, that in that the mission and the ministry that gets accomplished there is significant. They do things here in, in uh, they do things there that we don't do here. They do schools and they do hospitals and they do, uh, you know, all kinds of different things that, that uh, certainly we used to do maybe in Canada, but now we've, you know, specialized in a, a few other things. But they're in some of those, uh, uh, some of those other countries. Um, they're into a whole host of things. So your, your dollars uh, are much appreciated as you contribute that way. Our next slide is going to probably be about the High Council. Now that happens this week, um, Saturday, May the 20th. Uh, that would have been yesterday. It started. Um, and then through the week. So if, well, let's do this a couple ways. Um, way number one. If you can read that or if you want to take note when it, pops up out in the hallway. It's uh, sar.my, sar.my slash welcome. But then there are, um, if you just go to salvationist.ca, go to salvationist.ca, there are links to the High Council. And there, there's going to be a number of things happen throughout the week. And uh, really what I want you to do is pray for the High Council. What's happening is they're electing a new general. General Brian Peddle is retiring and uh, a new general will be elected. Um, and uh, so that happens through the week this week. They, it's quite a process and, and a very uh, a process that we would want you to bathe in prayer uh, throughout the world. Uh, that's what they're asking for. So please um, be in prayer for this event. Now, as I say that, right on the heels of that, um, some of you know how this works and some of you don't. That. Um, what happens at a high council is all of the world leaders, the leader for Canada, the leaders in the U.S., all come together uh, in England uh, to, to, to go through this process. Our leader, uh, Commissioner Floyd Tidd, is not there, and he's not there because he's, uh, he's um, found himself in a, in, a, in a health situation, serious health situation. Um, cancer has returned and he's under treatment uh, once again. So if you would be in prayer for the High Council and, and indeed for uh, Commissioner Floyd and Commissioner Tracy Tidd in these days, our Canadian uh, leaders, whose picture is right there uh, uh, on the uh, Congress uh, right up. You'll notice if you're paying attention to Congress, they're looking for some volunteers and uh, you could do that. Uh, e easy to sign up for that. Just uh, go to uh, salvationist.ca forward slash inspire and that'll uh, get you uh, into that, uh, that place. So be in prayer for this event as well in June, uh, late June, early July. Um, then after that, Baby Song. I know I keep telling you to pray for Baby Song. Baby Song is coming to a conclusion uh, for the summer and so please continue to pray for those families that have, uh, have, have made themselves uh, a part of that very, very important ministry and uh, engaged in that in such a nice way. Um, men's breakfast coming up next Saturday, uh, the 27th. Get your 
get your name on the sheet if you're uh, able to and, and attend. And that will probably be our, our last one for the year, I, I think, but uh, Arch will help me figure that one out. But I think that's going to be our last one for the year. And then I think that's um, the end of the announcements right there. Um, uh, this morning we had a special uh, brief but a special uh, thing to do. Um, uh, interesting story. Um, Major Doug Speakman uh, had an MRI scheduled in the Buffalo and he set aside money for that um, and that got cancelled and as you know he was uh, promoted to glory very shortly after that. Now June told me that he came home and the first thing he did was he wanted the phone number for supplies and purchasing and uh, asked that uh, and, and made a phone call and ordered for the same price as an MRI 60 uh, Salvation Army songbooks and they've arrived and uh, we're in the process of getting them um, just uh, an inscription in the front which we've developed and we've approved uh, June has seen it. Uh, it not in yet but it's just because we had a a hiccup with the stickers to come the right size. They're here now. It says, in memory of Major Doug Speakman, follower of Christ, 2023. So what I want to do just now uh, is take a moment. We're going to dedicate the songbooks. Now here's how they'll be used. Uh, there'll be a supply of songbooks out on the welcome desk uh, anytime you come on Sunday. Uh, as you know, there's at least three songs every Sunday that are from the songbook. And what we'll do is, uh, is try to um, put the number of the song on the screen when it comes up so that you can either read it from the screen or if it's more, um, more convenient, which is really what uh, Major Doug wanted uh, for you to see this. Um, he and I had many, many talks about this screen uh, and what we might do with it, right down to loading it in a truck and moving it out to the parking lot, but uh, um, some, some may find that it's easier to read from here. So there'll be songbooks uh, if you'd like to, and like I said, at least three songs every Sunday are, are from the songbook. Uh, would you stand with me in prayer? Let's bow for prayer. Father, as we take just a moment to dedicate some pieces of paper, I suppose, but pieces of paper bound in a book that we in the Salvation Army call our songbook. A songbook that contains words that have touched our hearts and continue to. Tunes and music that continues to bless us and we sing it to your glory. Songs that have challenged us to the depths of our soul and acknowledging in this moment that so many times the things that we sing go so deep in our heart. It's been said that the Salvation Army's theology is written in these songs and it's so true. We sing what we believe. We sing what's uh, come to the hearts of those who have penned these words. So, Lord, in memory of Major Doug this morning, and in thanks for his life and his dedication as a follower of Christ, we dedicate these 60 songbooks to the service of the kingdom. And as we sing from them, may your heart be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we're going to sing our opening song and uh, you'll be glad to know that we have already introduced it. You might have even been able to catch the syncopated uh, beat, but we're going to sing that song again. It's song 307 and there's the words. Oh, what a wonderful day I will never forget. After I'd wandered in darkness. Jesus, my Savior, I met. Have you, have you got that day? Have you got that day written down? For some of us, we can write the day down. For some of us, it was just a process. But on August the 19th, 1977, about 7 o'clock at night, I found myself kneeling beside my bed saying words just about like that. And uh, certainly true for me. So we're going to stand and sing these verses too, please, Bandmaster. Here we go.
writer says, now I have a hope that will surely endure for the all of time of a future in heaven there in those mansions made without hands, sublime. And it's because of that wonderful day when at the cross I believe riches, eternal blessings, supernal from his precious hand I received, heaven came down and glory filled my soul. The final verse, please, let's sing together. After the passing of time Please be seated. Please be seated. <laughs> Thanks to the band for accompanying us in such a great way. We've got a couple songs that we're going to sing as we continue to lift up our praise this morning. And um, you know one of these, you know two of these, but one of them uh, we're going to introduce to you this morning. This first song, uh, you know. And. Uh, It's a great song. Um, we have sung it uh, a few times. Uh, there's a, there's a, a, it's called a tag, I think. It's, it's an ending that we, we've uh, put on here. And uh, it just closes uh, in, in such a powerful way, uh, in such a real way. Uh, the, the last, very last thing that we sing in this song says, when the night is holding on to me, God is holding on to me. And isn't that how it, uh, how it works in our life? Uh, that uh, sometimes things uh, capture us and overwhelm us, but when those times are upon us, God holds on completely.
never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me scripture in the, the book of Numbers. It's one of those, um, it's one of those blessings that uh, we, we sometimes speak over others, and it's one that we're going to use the next little bit as we learn it to speak over one another. Uh, the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you, be gracious to you. Lord, make his face, turn his face toward you and give you peace. So let's, uh, we're just going to learn it together. I, you, you may have heard it. It's been around for a little while. Looks like it was written right at the beginning of the pandemic. So.
face shine upon and be gracious to you. to get familiar with it a little bit uh, you can sing some harmony and just uh, close your eyes and lean back and sing Amen be it, may it be so Lord I know this song in these moments in our service still worshiping still lifting our hearts in praise but in the quietness of this moment where we pray that you would just move in upon us and speak into our hearts in these days we love you our desire is to serve you we want to know your heart in our hearts 
We pray that your spirit would move in upon us in a way that would empower us and equip us in these days as we seek to be a light in a dark place, as we seek to share your gospel in a world that really doesn't know if they want to hear that. We've heard it loud and clear. So as we share your word with others, Lord, we equip, equip us and strengthen us. Father, we pray today for those in our congregation who need you to be very close. Folks who are battling illness, folks who are working through grief and turmoil. Those of us who have people in our family who, who just need you to press in close with them. Lord, we need to know. We need to know and be reassured that you are right there with us in our coming and our going, in our weeping and our joy. And we'll say, I love you, Lord. service and uh, Terry is going to come and share in prayer with them. Would the ushers like to come forward please? Let us pray. Dear God, as we return to you part of what you have given us, we must remember others in this world who are not as fortunate as us, not as fortunate as us to know you or to live in a country of such freedom as we do. So much of the world is now in turmoil and we pray that we will use this money to extend your kingdom into those parts and in our own country so that peace and joy which is brought by knowing you and come upon the many people that are suffering right now. Please help us to use this wisely. Amen.
You'll see that our scripture reading this morning is taken from 2 Timothy, the letter that we've been studying for just a little while and um, are going to be wrapping up in the next few weeks. But uh, uh, we're going to be taking a particular look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 8 to 13 this morning. And so if you've got your Bible in whatever version you brought it in, uh, maybe it's uh, bound in a book, maybe it's on your phone, maybe it's on your iPad, uh, doesn't matter. Bring it along, and uh, if you're reading along, uh, I'm reading from the New King James Version this morning. Verse 8 says, Now as Jans and Jambres resisted Moses, so do these people also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapproved concerning the faith, but they will progress no further, for their folly will be manifest to all as theirs also was. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of truth, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, and out of all of them the Lord delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Amen. Now the band's going to share with us their selection. It's holy, 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 beautiful, beautiful tune. Thanks, Ben.
when I was a kid, a couple of years ago, in church, um, that's the song I remember. That's the one uh, that I would listen. There was no band in the little United Methodist Church in Culloden, uh, but my grandmother played the piano, and it's the first time I remember appreciating harmony. And just, uh, I, I, I heard the tune, but then I began to hear harmony, and I couldn't believe what I was hearing. And I heard those this morning. Thanks, uh, thanks, folks, for that. You might not know this, but um, recently, very recently, quite recently, uh, quite a fascinating thing happened in our province, in our country, actually. Um, it probably didn't impact you like it did Im impact me, but uh, um, Rogers, took over Shaw. Didn't really hit you, did it? But it hit me because, see, I've been a Shaw subscriber for a long time uh, because we lived, like I said earlier this morning, lived up in the middle of kind of nowhere where you couldn't get cable TV and I had kids and the only way that we could figure out to keep the kids entertained was no, we didn't just sit them in front of the TV. But you know what I'm saying. I grew up in the TV era. You'd come into the house, the TV was on. You know, it just was on. And um, so just recently, uh, Shaw was bought out by Rogers. And I got this email. It took three of them for me to get it. But it said, hey, uh, all of those set-top boxes. I know I live in the archaic world, I'm not a streamer, but uh, those set-top boxes that you have are no longer going to work after May the 10th, but on May the 7th, I called them up, spent my hour on the telephone waiting for them to pick up, you know the deal, and they finally picked up and said, oh yes, those set-top boxes are going to stop working in a couple days, and was, we'll send you some more, how many do you need, we need the serial numbers, All we had to go through all the stuff, anyway, they sent them and I got them, and uh, you know, happy to say that uh, you know things are things are working I watched the hockey game last night so it's good a little bit of it born in, born in Carolina you know well here, here's the thing though the set top boxes came with new remotes so what do you have to do you have to program the remote seems simple right well let me just walk you through a couple of statements that come uh, on the, I can't even read that without a magnifying glasses. And, and here's the one that got me. Here's the one that got me. And, and so the, if, if the brand of the device does not respond to the remote control address, are you with me still? Sure you are. Okay, so that meant that I had to look up the remote control, the, the, the device address. Well, I've got uh, an LG, and so it's, it's one of these 25 possibilities, each a five-digit number. So, so here's, it's fairly, it's very simple, it's very simple. Uh, search, uh, so turn on the device. I got that part. Press and hold the device key until the red light flashes at least twice. Got it. Then enter 991. Perhaps I'm dyslexic, but I entered 911 four times until I, it was. The red light will blink, blink twice after you do it the proper way. Then press digit 1 to search for a TV. Press digit 2 to search for a DVD VCR, or press di digit 3 to search for an audio device while pointing the remote at the device. Continue to press the channel up key until the device turns off, at which time you press the device key again, which will lock in that code for that device. But if you press channel one too many times, the device will turn off. You'll go past its device address, and it won't work. Great, hey? Do you want to come over and program my remotes? Because a couple of them still, uh, but now that I've read it out loud, I, I feel a little better. Confusing? Uh, yes, quite confusing. But uh, as I was doing this, I was thinking, you know, life can get confusing, can't it? And don't you wish, don't you wish that life came with a set of instructions, precise instructions, right down to the address code uh, in the box of life, uh, but it doesn't. And I know what you're thinking. 
I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, come on, Major Brad Donis, you should be proclaiming that, of course, life comes with an instruction manual. It's called the Bible, the Holy Scriptures. Not making fun, but yeah, I know. And, and prayer and all those things, I know. But life sometimes gets just so confusing that even those things find, I find difficult to get there sometimes. The problem with life's challenges is that they compound. It's not just a remote control that runs a receiver, is it? It's people and family and your children and their children and their children. Generations of kids that, that, that come and, and we, want, we, we want so much the best for them and situations in our lives, all kinds of them, coming at us in, 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 like a snow flurry in our face. And problems. Let's start talking about problems. The things that, that come to us. And I'm telling you, these things compound. They stack up on one another. How about life challenges? Things that, that come to us in an abundance. And we're trying to deal with them all and trying to deal with them all, and trying to keep ahead of it. And the instruction manual is getting a little bit foggy. And while I go to the scriptures, sometimes it's not as clear as I want it to be. I want to be able to pick up the telephone <laughs> and call God and say, hey, what do I do about this situation, or that situation, or this, 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 and this situation in a jumbled up pile? Sometimes life's challenges come at us in such a way that we really can't quite keep up with all of them. And yes, we need to consult the scriptures. And yes, we need to be in prayer. And yes, we need to be together in all those things and talking with our, our believing uh, brothers and sisters. But I'm telling you, sometimes you find yourself under a pile, under a heap of stuff. So I'm really glad. I'm really glad that as Paul writes this letter to Timothy that we looked at this morning. And we're kind of in the warning, the warning part of the, of the, of the letter, aren't we? A, a lot of warnings. And they're not as fun to listen to. They're really fun to preach because to look at the, your face kind of grimace a little bit, that's, that's quite entertaining. It's not entertaining at all, but it's reality, isn't it? Isn't it? Sometimes we need to be warned about things. And Paul goes through this, this warning section. And it's not really pretty. In fact, one of our scripture readers one week said it's kind of a dark section. Yeah, kind of dark. He talks about people that we'd rather not meet. And he lists this, this couple of guys named Jans and Jambres. If, uh, if my Hebrew is off, you'll understand. Uh, I'm not sure how their names were pronounced but in Hebrew, but, but I'm, I'm saying that they were, they were not nice people. And they were not nice people, not in the community, but in the, in, the, in the faith. They were people that were inside the faith that were doing things that were doing harm to the church. And those type of people Paul refers to as he refers to these Old Testament two guys that gave Moses some problems. And we... We thought about Moses. We walked through Moses' life last week, and, and he, he was a leader, but he had some problem people. I'm not saying that's any of you. I'm just saying when you put people together in a bunch, there are problems. And Timothy was going through the exact same things in Ephesus as he was trying to establish a church. He was going through people problems and situations and other problems and challenges. And they were all heaping up on him. And he was needing to find a way to, to, to overcome and at least get through those things. Just like you and I have to do to get from one day to the next in life. So he launches this little passage uh, in verse 10 this morning. Having contrasted that with some of the hard things that were going on, he says these words. And he starts out with these two words, but you, Timothy, but you. The first two words of next week's sermon are going to start with the same two words, but you. He's contrasting. He's saying, this is all going on over here and all these people are doing all these things, but you, Timothy, but you, Timothy, you're different. You need to do some different things. You need to, to not get caught up in those things because you are different. 
And I love what he says. He says, but you have carefully followed. Now, as you'll remember, unless you carefully follow the instructions for programming your remote control, it's not going to go well. In fact, what I found out four times is that if you press the wrong sequence of numbers, 911 instead of 991, it's just not going to work at all. If you forget to press the 1 after you've pressed 991 and then 1 again, it's going to program your, your refrigerator, not your TV. I'm just saying. It's probably why everything's warm in my fridge now. Well, I don't know. You've got to follow these instructions carefully. Do you follow things carefully? I'm sure you do. I'm sure you're not like me, in a rush, moving pretty fast. Oh, yes, you are. Life moves pretty fast. And oftentimes, as I've already suggested, things come not in ones or twos or threes, but in tens. Things that just pile up on you. And you're trying to juggle all kinds of things. Paul says to Timothy, you've followed these things carefully. If, if I could just say that one one thing this morning, we could stop there, couldn't I? That there are some things, even despite the world that we live in, there are some things that you really need to be careful about in this world. That you need to follow these things carefully. It really is discipleship, isn't it? Jesus said, go into all the world and make Christians. No, he didn't say that. He said, go into all the world and make disciples. So as Paul says these things to Timothy, he's zeroing in right on what exactly was in Timothy's heart and in my heart and in your heart, I'm sure. I want to be a disciple of Jesus. I want to follow him closely and carefully. That's who I want to be. I've been praying that since August 19th, 1977. Follow these things carefully, not haphazardly, not occasionally, not carelessly, not when I feel like it. Follow these things carefully, he says. And he gives us a list. There's a lot of lists in 2 Timothy, and here's a list. We're going to just walk down through it. Because the first thing that Paul says to Timothy that he has followed carefully, Paul says, is my doctrine. Paul's doctrine. Paul's teaching. You know, there is so much teaching available to you these days. You, don't, you can come Sunday, and I hope what you get on Sunday is valuable and valid. But there is so much stuff for you to listen to these days. Podcasts and tapes and CDs and DVDs and videos and YouTube and Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. and All kinds of information flowing at you in like a tidal wave. We need to be careful to follow the right teaching. And let me just say this, that everything you hear may not be right. I hope that everything you hear here is right. I'll do my best to make sure of it, no matter who is saying it, not just me. That's part of being a leader. But there is so much stuff out in the world. You've got to filter, filter, filter. Carefully follow teaching. Paul goes on and says, you've carefully followed my manner of life. That means conduct, the things that he did, the things that his behavior. Now what I've noticed is that in our world, people can teach you stuff and they can show you, show you how they behave and it may still be questionable. See, people can tell us things and they can act a certain way and it may still be mm, questionable. Put those kinds of filters up, especially as you're listening to stuff that comes to you from the media. But the next one, not so easy to fake. My purpose, Paul says. You've carefully followed my teaching, he says to Timothy, my conduct, he says to Timothy, and my purpose, my aim in life. You can't really fake that one too long, can you? 
It doesn't take us too long being in the presence of somebody who is giving us teaching and who is giving us, showing us their conduct. It doesn't take us too long to see what their purpose is. What is their aim in life? Where are they going? What are their values? And we talked about these things uh, back a, a little bit ago. Do you have a purpose? Do you have a purpose in life? Has God laid upon you a purpose? You may say, well, come on, Brad, I'm retired. Or come on, Brad, I'm too young for that, or I'm too old for that, or I'm, I'm too busy for that. Well, listen, I believe that God will lay upon you a purpose if you ask him. I believe that he will give you more of a purpose than just getting up, surviving another day, and falling into bed. I believe he will. Ask him. God, what do you want from me today? Who is it that you would like to, me to speak to today? Pray things like, God, would you prepare me for the people that you know I'm going to encounter today? Will you prepare my heart for those conversations? I believe God will give you a purpose. I believe he's already done it. You just got to tune into it. So things about Paul that Timothy was needing to carefully follow. We'll come back to some application in a minute. But then he goes on and says, you followed my faith. The faith in God that Paul exercised and showed and taught about, Timothy was following that carefully. And don't we need that every day? Because it's the faith, the faith that can get knocked off the tracks, isn't it? When we get broadsided by something that we didn't see coming, it's our faith that can take a hit. We find ourselves questioning. We find ourselves not in the space we need to be spiritually. We find ourselves in places where we shouldn't maybe go in our mind. Carefully follow the faith that's been laid out before you. He goes on and says, my long suffering. Long suffering means patience with people. Are you there? Or do you find yourself a little short with people when, when things get just a little bit intense? I found myself a little short with a very important person in my life just a couple days ago. I'd worked too many hours that day. I'd been doing too many things. It was too late at night. There were too many things happening. And I found myself just a little bit short. And you know what? The beautiful part of that is this person who I was being a little bit short with told me, I love my wife. She keeps me on track, and she told me. And I needed to go and say some other words that weren't as silly or harsh or was less than courteous. Long-suffering, Paul says. Timothy, you've observed, you've followed closely my long-suffering. His, his patience with people in the worst of situations. His patience with people who really weren't that nice to him. In fact, we're going to look at a little bit about those people in a moment. My long-suffering, my love, he says. You've followed carefully my love. Primary, primarily his love for other people, but he was referencing also his love for his enemies. Are, are you there? Maybe you have no enemies. Well, you do have one. It's the, it's the opponent, right? The devil is your enemy. Let's never forget that. But there are people that we don't always line up completely with, right? But you've got to love those people. Even if you don't agree with them, even if you don't think the way they do, even if you don't have the same value system, you've got to love those people as Jesus told us to. And he finishes this little section with my perseverance. Timothy, you followed carefully my perseverance. Endurance is the word. Staying with it when you don't feel like it. Unwavering perseverance in trying circumstances. Got any of those? Trying circumstances. Circumstances where things aren't just going your way. Things just aren't really the way you wish they were. Holding up under the trials of life, that's, that's perseverance. Holding on to the faith when things get really hard to hold on to. Paul takes a breath. 
Have you ever had letters like that? Do you ever get letters? Not emails. I'm thinking letters that come in the mail. Usually it's just bills, right? I get a 407 bill, I get a hydro bill, I get a water bill. Not too many people writing me these letters anymore. Do you remember when you used to write letters? You know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't let that one go. Just because we can send something to somebody instantly, there's still some value in sitting down, putting pen to paper, and actually writing a letter. And if you can remember the last time you did that, and you actually wrote a couple of paragraphs, and then you stopped, and you read what you've just written, and you took a breath, and you thought about what's the next important thing to say. You see, in our electronic world, we don't think that way. We try to get things together as quickly as we can, get, hit the send button, away it goes. Sometimes you wish you'd not hit the send button. Take a minute to think about what you've said. Take a minute to think about what you've written. It's a great exercise to write some things down. Paul takes a breath. And he says, you've, you've carefully followed my persecutions and my afflictions. The things that happened to me at Antioch where I was run out of town for what I'd said. The things that happened to me at Lystra, where the Jews, my own people, took offense at what I was saying and ran me out of town and, and at, at Iconium. One of those places, Acts chapter 14, have a look at it later, Paul was stoned, left for dead, drug out of town, ready to be just disposed of, but he wasn't dead. Persecution? Oh yeah, oh yeah. He takes one more breath and says, yes, and all those who live, desire to live a godly life, will suffer persecution. That's you. That's me. See, it wasn't promised to be simple and easy. It wasn't promised to be a, a, a walk in the park. If you're a believer, you're going to go against the grain of the world. The things you believe, the things you do, the things you say, the things that you hold on to are not going to be the same as the things of the people around you. You will suffer you will suffer some persecution. Sorry. It is the way it is. So what about us? What are the things that we must hold on to? If life simply doesn't come with a step-by-step -step guide as to how to program things when things go a little crazy or when things change, what are the things that we need to hold on to? Well, I believe that they're just the same. I believe that if we'll take t time to intentionally pay attention to the teaching that we're receiving, here, other places, the host of things that you listen to, will you put up some filters or will you just catch some of it? What I've noticed sometimes is so much information comes at us that we don't, we don't hold on to anything. It just comes at us and falls away, comes at us and falls away. I've had to do that in my morning reading time to make sure I'm not just trying to get through a volume of Scripture, but I'm actually using some of the retention skills that I've learned over the last 60 years to hold on to some of that. Not just read it for the sake of reading it. Are you holding on to some of the teaching that you hear? Are you incorporating it into your life? Are you paying attention to your conduct? Do you have some mentors? Maybe they're mentors that are inside of a book, or maybe they're mentors that come to you on a broadcast, or maybe they come to you on the television, or maybe your mentors are right here. But are you making sure that some of that is, is, is finding its home in your heart. Do you have a purpose? Has God laid upon you a purpose for your life? 
What's the state of your faith? Are you long-suffering or are you constantly short of patience? What's the temperature of your love? The list is right there in 2 Timothy chapter 3. You don't have to write it down. You can go home and read it. Check in on each of those things that Paul was checking in with Timothy and imagine. Imagine what our world would look like if just us 45, 50 people did that. We, just, we, were, we were sold out to that, to paying attention to those things in our life. When life gets tough, we're going to get out the instruction manual and follow those things carefully, carefully. Let's pray. Father, this morning, as we take a look at this list, and we've said this before, sometimes lists are easy to discard. We don't complete them. It's too many words, too many things. But Lord, in this list that you allowed Paul to hand to Timothy in a letter, there are nine things that, that we can hang our hearts on, that we can follow you in. Each one of those things has a special place in your heart. And as we, as we pay attention to those things, Lord, we'll find ourselves back on track spiritually, back on track in the midst of trouble and trial and persecution, in the midst of problems and challenges. These things give us hope. So, Lord, will you help us to follow carefully after these things? We see them in your word. Watch over us as we do, I pray. We're going to share in a moment of uh, just, just a, a chorus of a song. We're going to put that chorus up here. In the love of Jesus, there is all I need. While I follow closely where my Lord may lead. By his grace, forgiven. In his presence, blessed. In the love of Jesus, in the love of Jesus, there is perfect rest. going to sing the chorus. We're going to sing it quietly a couple of times and Sylvia is playing the tune on the piano. Beautiful, beautiful chorus, beautiful tune, but powerful words for us. That's, it's in Jesus' love that we will find rest and healing and help and forgiveness. Let's lift this chorus up once or twice. yourself to him this morning and if God is speaking and you feel you need to come and kneel at this place of prayer please don't wait for a better moment this is the moment sing the chorus once more with me if you will
Arch is going to come and lead us in our closing song and the benediction, please. Thanks, Brad, for sharing with us again this morning from your heart. I know you're inspired by the Holy Spirit. And may we let these words sink in this morning. Bless you, buddy. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. And I wonder how he could love me as sinner condemned and clean. Think about it, folks. Oh, we could love us, sinners, condemned, unclean. Let's stand together and do verse 1 and 2, Roger, please. Calvary and he suffered and died alone. Then the last verse when with the ransomed in glory his face I at last shall see for be my joy through the ages to sing of his love for me. Let's sing it together please. Two verses Roger. Sins and my soul shall ever be how marvelous how wonderful is my Savior's love to me father we thank you for meeting with us this morning 
We thank you for speaking to our hearts. We want to ask your blessing upon us now as we move away from this place. In the name of Christ, amen.